What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are back again on the Shitbox Forester. Uh, today we're going to do a compression test. I did say in the last video that I was going to do a leak down test, but I don't actually have an air compressor yet. So I need the air compressor obviously to fill the cylinders with air to see where the air is coming out for the leak down test. I will get around to doing that when I do pick one up. I might run down to super cheap auto and get one. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, but yeah, for now we'll, we'll crank on. We'll uh, get the spark plugs out. We'll do a compression test on it. Thankfully, this being a single overhead cam motor, it's a lot easier for me to reach the spark plugs. They're not right down in the middle of the heads like they are with the quad cams. So it's not going to be too much of a drama for me. I will have to pull out the air box to gain access to the driver's side, but thankfully on this passenger side here, I can actually get down in there and not have to remove anything because this model does not have an air pump and the battery is not actually in the way of it. So uh, let's get cracking and see what the results are. <laughs> So I think before I have even done the compression test, I have found a bit of an issue. That is the spark plug out of cylinder one. Look at all that carbon buildup. So that buildup right there shows me that cylinder one has an issue with oil getting into the cylinder, uh, which is never a good time. You're burning oil, so therefore you're gonna end up losing oil in your engine but it does cake up your spark plugs like this and cause them not to actually fire, uh, which very well may be why this car is misfiring. Still gonna do the compression test. We'll, uh, we'll see what the compression's like. Hopefully it's not too far down. It might just be uh, because this motor probably sat in a wrecking yard for so many years. It might just be a case of the rings may just be a bit sticky. Um, I will go and get some diesel. I've been told pour a little bit of diesel down into the cylinder and uh, crank it over a few times and it should loosen up the rings. Never tried it myself. Um, apparently it works, so we may try that, but uh, we'll see what the compression comes out as. I forgot to mention that I do have to put the timing covers back on and the crank pulley back on before doing the compression test just to make sure that the engine is still all balanced all right. Um, obviously I haven't taken the timing belt off, but that crank pulley is essential. I could do it without putting the time covers on. It wouldn't harm the engine at all, but I may as well just put it back on because it's gonna go back on anyway.
When doing a compression test, it is essential that you disable the fuel from getting into the cylinders. Now this card does not have a fuel pump fuse, so I can't just simply pull that out to stop the fuel pump sending fuel. But thankfully, what Subarus do is if you disconnect the crank angle sensor, it will actually disable the fuel injector pulse as well. So I will go ahead and I will unplug the crank angle sensor, then we'll crank this motor over, holding the throttle wide open while doing it. Crank it over for about six revolutions and uh, read what the results are. Almost 200 PSI, so compression's good in cylinder one. Well, that was a fail, that was not in properly. That just shot straight out. Note to yourself, make sure compression tester is screwed in properly. Why is it popping out? It doesn't take any aluminium off. Too far down, I can't see. Is that thread on that cylinder no good? Do I have to get a bore scope down on that? All right, let's see the results for cylinder four. Cylinder four are sitting at about 180. So for cylinder two, we've got about 180 PSI, just like in cylinder four. So the cylinders are roughly the same. I've still got to try cylinder three. Um, I don't know why it kept popping out, but the threads aren't gone, so I'm gonna have another try, see whether I can get this to actually work on cylinder three. All the other cylinders are pretty good. Um, comp's quite high, which is a, a good sign. So maybe it might just be that that plug has um, been sitting in there for ages. The car had at one stage possibly been burning a lot of oil. Probably still is. Um, but I'll get this compression test done on cylinder three. If that all checks out, I'll chuck some good plugs in it. I'll try it again. If it's still blowing some smoke, then we will have to carry out the leak down test, see where the oil is leaking from. My guess looking at that plug is it's going to be rings. We'll try the, uh, the diesel test or hack, I should say. Pour a little bit of diesel down into the cylinder, hopefully free up those rings, like I said before. This motor had been sitting at the wrecking yard for God knows how many years. So they could be stuck. The rings could be stuck. Um, maybe me driving it have loosened them up since. And it was just pumping out smoke due to the spark plug not actually igniting. Although it was like a whitish blue smoke. So that does indicate oil. Um, it's just something we're going to have to check out. Just does not want to grab. Okay, so for some strange reason, it doesn't want to grab maybe the first couple of threads inside of the spark plug hole have actually been pulled out. Um, Cause as you can see, there's not a lot of actual thread for this to grab in on. Um, I don't have an extension tube for it either, not on hand. So, uh, I'm gonna chuck the plugs back in and start it up and just see whether it is plugs. Um, I, I've got a good feeling that compression's all good. Three cylinders are fine. And because we can't test cylinder three and the car did run reasonably okay, except for the misfire at idle. Um, I don't think it's a compression issue. So we're gonna chuck the plugs in, start the car up, see how she runs. Hopefully it's just a plug issue and that fouled up plug was not firing and then we're all sweet and just got to deal with the whole blowing smoke if it even does still blow smoke.
Okay, it's all back together. Now all I need to do is start it. Fingers crossed it was just spark plugs and we will see whether it does pump smoke. So I'm gonna open the garage door behind me just in case it does blow smoke. I don't wanna fill the garage up with smoke. Um, it is quite windy outside as well, so you guys may hear the wind. Just ignore it. Let's, uh, let's see how it goes. I don't know why it's revving up to 3,000 RPM. That's not good. Not good at all. Have I left something undone? I don't know. Now, obviously, because we did disconnect the crank angle sensor and we turned the ignition on and like went to start the car, it will throw a DTC. So I'm just going to plug in the scan tool and just clear the DTCs and we will try to start it again. We'll just go through, scan all the codes, we'll clear them. There will be one for the crank angle sensor due to the fact that we have taken it off. Um, hopefully there's no other ones. There might be for airflow meter because that was also disconnected. Yeah, so crankshaft position sensor, intake air temp sensor and mass airflow meter. In these, the airflow meter is also the intake air temp sensor, so that's why those two will be up. Clear DTCs. Okay, let's try again. Subarus, mostly foresters, have got a tendency to rev up high or stall when you come to a stop after the ECU's been reset or the battery's been changed. Um, that comes down to the ECU thinking that the throttle has been cleaned um, and there's no carbon buildup. Obviously, if you don't clean it, it will think it's at one position when really it's slightly open at another position. So I'm going to whip this air box off now. I'm going to get some carby cleaner in there, um, clean it out. And then we'll try again, hopefully that's all it is. And then it will start to actually rev properly and rev nice. Don't worry about if you can see steam, that's just the bit of coolant that did drop onto the exhaust here. That will burn off. It smells like crap. If you guys know what burning coolant smells like, it's not a nice smell. Um, so let's get whipped into pulling the intake off and giving the throttle body a bit of a clean because I don't know whether this one's actually ever been cleaned and that could very well be why it's revving so high. It's probably gunked up with carbon. The throttle's probably sitting at about 30% open when the ECU thinks it's only at 5%. So clearly, even after cleaning out the throttle body, which was quite carboned up, uh, there still seems to be another issue with the car revving up high. Now with these old plugs, it didn't used to do that. Uh, that's probably mostly due to the misfire. Um, I'm just hoping it's nothing major. Hopefully it's a wiring issue. I will dive deeper into it. 
but that'll be in the next video. Thank you guys for watching and sticking around. If you've got this far and you've liked it, please subscribe, hit the notification button so you guys do get notified when new videos do come out. And I'll see you guys in the next one when we tackle the further issues that this hunk of crap has. Bye guys.